I'm going to read it. Uh, kindly concentrate. An infant born at 28 weeks of gestation suddenly collapses at three weeks of the age. Okay. This is a preterm baby who suddenly collapses at three weeks of the age. She was initially ventilated for 10 days, right? And has since been stable on nasal CPAP in 26% of the oxygen. The baby is currently receiving TPN via a percutaneous long line that is situated in the right atrium. Okay. So, and he's on 4 ml per hour of the enteral feed via a NG feed, NG tube. At the time of collapse, she is poorly perfused with a capillary refill of 6 seconds. That is too high, too long. He's, she's tachycardic at 195 per minute. And his BP is 36 by 28. Kindly mute yourself when you enter into the meeting, please. Mute yourself, please. Okay. The child is tachycardic. Heart rate is too high, like 195. And BP is 36 by 28. That is low. There is no heart murmur. But heart sounds are quiet. Okay, so it means baby is critically sick right now. And arterial blood gases that reveal a mixed respiratory and metabolic acidosis. Following ventilation and stabilization, a chest X-ray was performed, which showed a massively enlarged cardiac shadowing with normal lung fields. Okay, so there is cardiomegaly, but lung fields, they are normal. Heart sounds are quiet. It means there is some problem. Distant heart sound. I cannot listen to the heart sound very clearly. Okay. So this is the picture. Her cranial ultrasound shows bilateral grade one intraventricular hemorrhage. What is the significance of this? They have given you this uh, ultrasound. Either there is sudden hemorrhage in the brain, uh, brain that has led the baby to collapse and to become pale and all others. But the picture here is if there was only problem, like if there was CNS problem, there must be this respiratory acidosis. If this it was a cardiac problem, then initial presentation would be with the metabolic acidosis. When the child becomes more and more sick, then these two acidosis, they can collectively present in our AVGs, right? So what is the most likely diagnosis? What is the cash point here? What is the cash point? Baby was six, baby, uh, sick, baby was on ventilator. Now the baby is on PPN. That is why this tube is where that is in the right atrium. Basically, this is the key point here. As you can see in this diagram, this baby was having this long, long line, maybe by this brachial vein, maybe by the below by the femoral vein. This line was present in the right atrium. If there is any injury, any problem in this line, sepsis, okay, what else? Zara, what it can be? Baby is 28 weeks, he was ventilated. Now the child is three weeks old, like he was out of sepsis, out of his condition then. And baby is now on TPN. The key point here is this TPN. Yes, this is the key point here. Where I am telling you about this long line. This is basically to ask the complication of this long line. This percutaneous long line should not be present in the right atrium that should be present vessels near to the heart so when it goes into the right atrium there is rupture of any vessel what it causes it causes cardiac tamponade that is why when the doctor try to listen to the heart he cannot listen there were distinct heart sounds he said in the question that heart sounds were quiet. Okay, there is no heart normal and the heart sounds are quiet with the mix CRT that is six seconds, that is too long. 
they did the screening ultrasound that was showing grade one intraventricular hemorrhage. Okay, go. Right. So this is the picture that is showing this. What is the most likely diagnosis? This is cardiac tamponade. The next one is tension pneumothorax. No, they have told us like the chest X-ray shows massively enlarged cardio shadow with normal lung field. So this is not a case of pneumothorax. What I can find in the tension pneumothorax? What is that? There is hyperlucency. There are hyperlucent shadows, and there is shifting of the mediastinum. So he very clearly said that now lung fields are normal, overwhelming sepsis. Why this is overwhelming sepsis? Yes, this may be, but he said the child suddenly collapsed. When you have sepsis, there are not so sudden changes. These sudden changes happens when there is a problem in your brain or when there is a problem in your heart. The other changes, they usually take some time. Just one sepsis, that is meningococcal sepsis or this pneumococcal sepsis. These two sepsis may take some time, like maybe one hour, maybe two hours, maybe a few hours. But the other sepsis, they will take some time, more than 24 hours. The sudden things, intracranial hemorrhage, that leads to sudden collapse or any problem in your heart suddenly that can lead to your collapse. But they have told us like what? The cranial ultrasound is showing grade 1 IVH. Grade 1 IVH is not very much hemorrhage. That is not going to uh, produce the CRT. That is 6 seconds. Congenital heart disease. Congenital heart disease. Is this a case of congenital heart? The child is stable on this 26% of the oxygen. They have not shown any persistent cyanosis or other things. Okay. What is increased intracranial pressure? No, they had cleared me that this was grade 1 IVH that usually resolves, that usually doesn't do any complication. And inborn error of metabolism, these inborn error of metabolisms usually do not present at three weeks of the age with sudden collapse. They usually present with encephalopathies not with your this CRT that is six seconds and quiet heart sounds. And what else? They usually have metabolic acidosis, not the mixture of this respiratory and metabolic acidosis. So this was about this one. This is the picture which I have uh, taken from the, this Google to show where, uh, where this uh, long line is placed. This is strongly placed if it is present in the right atrium okay so uh, now this is the answer for that what is the answer that is cardiac tamponade they are asking about the differential diagnosis of this baby it includes tamponade first of all then septicemia yes then congenital heart diseases and inborn of metabolism but in our scenario they have ruled out all, all, all together echo is the investigation of the choice obviously which will not only confirm if mean but also it exclude congenital heart diseases, right? Tamponade in this case has occurred secondly to the long line, which has migrated into the pericardial sac, right? Percutaneous long lines should be positioned just outside the heart, either in the superior or inferior vena cava. It's vital that the tip is clearly visualized. When you do the X-ray, you should be very clear about the tip of this long line if it is placed in the right atrium it must be withdrawn and re-x-ray this sometimes they ask in the uh, your recalls what will you do if you find a tip of this long line into the right atrium in some recalls they have asked this okay if the tip cannot be in contrast medium should be used remember this this is also an important point if you cannot see what you will do you will go to the contrast media Management, what is the management of this tamponade? It involves a removal of the long line and drainage of the pericardial effluent, which is present. Next, in here they have told how you will drain it. You will go by the ZP sternal angle 
towards the tip of this left axilla. Okay. At what angle? Cannula is placed at an angle of 30 degrees to the skin, directly towards the left shoulder. Sorry, I was saying axilla, it's left shoulder. Aspirated fruit should be sent for microbiology and biochemistry. Only if the effluent reaccumulates will it be necessary to leave a catheter in situ. In this case, the difference to was confirmed to be TPM. Okay, so th this was actually a real scenario which they have given us in the new format book. Okay, now we are moving to the next uh, scenario for the cardiology system. Okay. So um, uh, we uh, did some ECGs yesterday. Can anybody uh, just I'm uh, looking at the ECG me? What does it have? Masuma, can you please tell me the ECG? Just looking at the ECG, what is very obvious in this ECG? I will not read the scenario. I will read it after you tell me. Can you please? ST elevation, yeah. Okay, what else? Yes, exactly. That is very important point. Who is there, please, mute yourself? I have to go. Okay, so in the ECG, we saw this ST elevation that is concave. What is my diagnosis? Concave ST elevation. Yes, Masuma, exactly. Concave ST elevation. What was the other feature we discussed yesterday? Yes, this is pericarditis. I talked about the two features. Yes, exactly, Dr. Rao. That is was the con yes, PR depression. Okay. So in this uh, okay, now you Yes, depression of the PR interval. Okay. So my diagnosis is pericarditis. Just looking at the this ECG. Now I'm going to read the scenario. In the ECG, they have two options. Like they may, they may ask you straightforward, what is your diagnosis? They can ask you what you are seeing in lead one, what you can see in lead two, what is important to see. I can also see this one. I can also see this. I can also see this. This T wave inversion. But what is important to make my diagnosis? This ST elevation, that is concave ST elevation. Okay. So, an 18 month old girl has been treated on the children's ward for meningococcal septicemia. This diagnosis has been assumed on the basis of localized pulpic rash and growth of the gram negative cocci on the blood pressure. She responded well to the IV fruits and antibiotics, but after an initial recovery, she has developed increasing tachypnea. So this is an excellent scenario, which is going to tell me that this meningococcal septicemia can also have pericarditis as its complication, which may develop after initial some recovery. Okay. While managing this patients of meningococcemia, it means we have to take care of the heart to look for the pericarditis. Okay. So one of the investigations performed that was ECG. Why? Because the child was tachypneic. Select the best part of the answer, best part, sorry, best pair of the answer, like matching here and making a diagnosis here. Low voltage QRS and raised ST segment is the voltage low. Is the voltage low? Yes, this is low. This is less than one large box. This is low voltage and raised ST segment. Yes, there is ST segment elevation. Voltage is low. When you see low voltage in two or three leads, this is low voltage. Like I will not, uh, you will, you may say, madam, this is more than five. Madam, this is more than five small squares, but look at this lead. This lead, that is low voltage. This is low voltage. This is less than five, that is low voltage. So this is a low voltage ECG, ECG. okay. Sinus tachycardia with the right heart stream. 
what are the strain patterns we discussed yesterday for ecg there is t wave inversion and st segment elevation but that is not concave that was a strain pattern is there a t wave inversion no is there t wave inversion no is there no dr afshin look at v1 there is t wave inversion is this normal or abnormal so i can see this is right a uh, uh, hard strain as you are telling me that this is t wave inversion who is going to tell me is this normal or abnormal there is no t wave inversion in this ecg why because in t from one week of life to up to 10 years you should have t wave inversion yes yes mrs bolit you are telling very right so this is not a strain pattern there is no sinus tachy what is heart rate like i count it 300 divided by uh, how many uh, small box large boxes exactly 1 2 here what what is in the lead to they have not given me lead to to look for the heart rate but yes this is not a case of sinus tachycardia as i can see 150 months that is not uh, very much tachycardic qtc of 0.55 i do not remember what is 0.55 for my long qt i have remember just one thing more than 12 small boxes more than 12 small boxes this is long qt so i can i see long qt here this like if this is q and this is t this is almost 5 to 7 boxes so it is not qtc that is 0.44 it is very very long qtc what is long that is more than 44 seconds okay so the right ventricular hypertrophy dr haseeb are you here is this right ventricular hypertrophy is this masuma is this right ventricular hypertrophy no yes this is not why because if you see this v1 said a very good but for right ventricular hypertrophy the very easy point if in the v1 you have upper t wave this is right ventricular hypertrophy okay okay so i chose a what is the next option is this second degree heart block no not at all pr interval is cardiomyopathy no pericarditis yes just looking at the ecg before reading this scenario i made my diagnosis that was pericarditis okay so what pair is we have selected that is a and 3 the same here the same description what i told you okay i am going towards the next one yes this we uh, discussed yesterday this is also a case of pericarditis there is concave st elevation and there is depression of the pr and the third thing what they have told us low voltage low voltage may, may be due to any cause but these two features they are typical of this pericarditis right now this third one 